TVAM is an abbreviation for transvascular autonomic modulation. And what that is, is a group of different therapies that are predominantly performed in a cath lab or a um, endovascular suite. And what that means is, is that the blood vessels provide access to the nerves that are responsible for autonomic function. This is something that originally was developed in what's called the electrophysiology lab, which is a cardiology-based uh, treatment for um, abnormalities of the heart rate. So arrhythmias of a certain type are treated with some sort of mechanical or electrical energy applied via uh, accessing the blood vessels. This is a particular type that we perform using the central veins. So it's a venous form of transvascular autonomic modulation and it's used to treat autonomic dysfunction. TVAM is a treatment for autonomic dysfunction. So a range of conditions are associated with it. You can certainly have autonomic dysfunction in isolation. In other words, there's no associated diseases. But we commonly see neurodegenerative diseases associated with autonomic dysfunction. For example, Lyme, chronic Lyme disease is one. Uh, additionally, Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis is strongly associated with autonomic dysfunction. We also see it with fibromyalgia. The first part of our process is to determine whether the autonomic symptoms are present or not. So we screen our patients by uh, going through a questionnaire looking to see if the um, patient actually experiences autonomic dysfunction based on their symptoms. That allows us then to feel comfortable scheduling an appointment since most of our patients travel to see us. When the patient arrives, we use HRV, which is a specific type of autonomic dysfunction testing to confirm the diagnosis. It relies upon the variability which should normally be present in the heart rate. In other words, the beat-to-beat -beat interval between one heartbeat to the next should vary. And when this variability is diminished, it represents a state of uh, illness, and, and that's very important for us to, to uh, confirm the diagnosis. The principle for development of uh, the TVAM procedure for dysautonomia is uh, based upon a therapy related to hypertension, and that procedure is known as renal denervation therapy. It involves a special type of balloon catheter that is placed in the artery to the kidney known as the renal artery. Energy is transferred from this catheter to the autonomic nerve fibers that travel alongside the vessel that result in a change in end organ function for patients with hypertension. A similar process is utilized during the TVAM procedure for dysautonomia. Rather than placing the balloon catheter in an artery, it's placed in a central vein and the target nerves are the baroreceptors responsible for sending information back to the brain regarding the volume and pressure within the central venous structures. The energy that's used is mechanical in nature. This is analogous to the treatment of renal denervation that primarily involves microwave energy. Uh, both are a transvascular process of altering autonomic function. The TVAM procedure is using balloons inside a vein to alter the function of the autonomic nervous system. And the underlying principle behind this is, is that the autonomic nervous system can be divided into two distinct categories. There's the portion that has the nerves going to the organs that adjusts them, and there's the portion that takes information from the organs that go back to the brain. The best way to describe this is actually to think of a thermostat. So a thermostat detects the temperature, sends a signal to some central unit, which then sends a signal back to alter the temperature. With this procedure, we are working on the temperature sensing portion, and what's actually um, involved is pressure inside the vein. Specific nerves called baroreceptors inside the veins are used to determine the pressure and volume within the venous system. They provide the feedback to the brain to control the cardiovascular functions. When you inflate a balloon inside the vein, you are stimulating the baroreceptors in a very powerful way because the balloons have extreme pressure in the neighborhood of 30 atmospheres. That signal sends an impulse to the hypothalamus, which then has a cascade effect on all the functions of both the autonomic nervous system and in fact the HPA axis which is a portion of the endocrine system, which works in the feedback system with the autonomic nervous system. This then improves the function of these vital condition or vital structures and improves organ system function and hopefully at the same time improves symptoms. Patients that are interested in this therapy typically have two very important questions. The first is, what are the chances this is going to help me? The second is, how long will that last? 
We've analyzed a recent series of patients in preparation for a publication in a medical journal. And from that, we learned that the majority of patients do respond in autonomic symptoms actually immediately following the procedure. Those symptoms are fatigue, thermal regulation, and cognitive impairment. And the response is minutes after the procedure. It is an immediate response. This uh, response may diminish and fall off within two months' time in about 20% of patients. However, the 80% of patients see this benefit maintained. In a separate uh, study that we're doing with approximately 400 patients, we found that at six months, the majority have either continued improvements or maintenance of the symptomatic improvements. The best part about it is, having done this procedure for over three years, is that I have patients now that have gone that long who've maintained the symptomatic relief from the day of the procedure until now.